there's right. questions, we're going to try to repeat the question. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Right now, we have uh, Kendra Collier from Skyline, the uh, hospital installation of all of our cameras in the school system that helps us with our toilets and everything like that. And then up front, we have Tim Brand from Quagnify. Quagnify, yeah. Uh, all right. And it's all right, it's all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so, what we've done the past three or four years, we've really ramped up the cameras. Um, as far as, if you remember, they used to be locked in the server room, and you had to get into the server room to view it. And once you got in there, you would notice that you know, the camera worked. Um, so we've been able to go on one platform across the entire county. Um, we've had some hiccups along the ways. We just recently upgraded. Um, all of the cameras to the new platform so everything should be up to par. With that being said, a lot of them have been renumbered, the maps have been easier to identify. We will still continue to add cameras with grants that pop up, with the uh, Maryland Center for School Safety grants and those kinds of things. There are some dead spots since we've done our audits that we know are in certain schools. So we will start um, hitting those, like I'm just making Sullersville example, Sullersville Elementary School, sorry, for example, has you know several dead spots on the outside. Ken Island High School has some in the corners. You know, we have some grants to fix those and then um, this summer and then we'll continue to keep on going with that. Next week, um, the Sheriff's Department, you. the Sheriff's Department and DES and ourselves will be um, working with MU which is the platform that allows law enforcement or um, emergency services to view our cameras if there's like an active assailant. Um, we were, are adding one uh, system at a time. Queen Anne's County High School is already online with that. So they'll be able to view those next week. Now, they're not gonna be able to just pop in anytime they want. I mean, there's gonna be rights that we can give them that if something does occur, then you know, they can view it, but they will not have access to be able to view anything on there at any time, right? Um, so I know we've had some people move around, some different faces, and we asked uh, for Jeff to take this today because we know a lot of times at the high school, the middle school, the assistant principals used to be video cameras more. So we kind of wanted to have something they could view afterwards or your teacher specialist to use. Um, to kind of go through this. Some of the items have changed um, on the system, and we're going to go through that update today. The one thing I will say, if you notice, we try to go through doing those each week on Monday, every system, and if she notices a camera down, she puts in a ticket in Skyline. I don't know, would you say 80% of the time, they can, 85% of the time, they can remote in and fix the system, or Josh can fix it, all right? That's one good feature about this. But there are times, you know, where we're gonna have to come out. But she looks at them once a week. If you see one, just have your secretary yourself email Jolene so that we can make sure we're on top of it. <coughs> Something doesn't happen like that. Because <coughs> as you know, we'll become more and more dependent on the cameras as time goes on. And if you have an incident that occurs, save it as soon as you can. Just don't wait just in case something happens, you know, and the system goes down, but save it as soon as you can and, you know, we'll be in a better situation. I want to turn it over to Tim. Thank you, sir. Um, so, um, just so you know, I think we gave a lot of these things away. I feel like Oprah. Mm -hmm. You get one, you get one, you get one. Um, I'm Tim Brand. I'm the regional manager from Atlanta area. I cover about 11 states. Um, they decided recently to give me the Mid-Atlantic, mid said you're doing such a good job, here's four more states in D.C. and 40 hours more a week, so congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, so during the presentation, if you got any questions, feel free to ask, interrupt me at any, any point. This is an interactive session, I want to make sure you're aware of how to use the tool properly. Um, there are a lot of features and functions within the, within the product itself. Um, I'm going to go over initially just more of the um, reviewing of the terminology, just so you're aware of some of the terms. As I start, if I start throwing them out, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then once I get into the real guts, 
I'm going to come off the 80, you know, 80 PowerPoint slide presentation, and we'll go directly into the live system and, and start it in because I don't want to bore you by PowerPoint. Um, so, so that's this is the basic agenda. I mean, I've got it breaking up into modules. We won't really hit them all because some of the functions and features don't apply to you. Um, most of the time, like I said, we'll spend on module one, two, three, and four. Those are the the, the, the two, three, and four are the key ones that you want to know about. How do I view live video? Um, how do I look at what we call recorded or, or uh, previous recorded video? And then how do I export that? And, and export is really important because there's multiple ways to export. So some of the resources, I mean, you're recording this, so that's good. But also, just so you know, you can go to Cognify.com. We've done a lot of these videos already, and they're available all the time, free of charge. Hit our website, find the video, it says, how do I export a video? Boom, it'll come up, it'll show you, kind of walk you through how to do that. Um, there's other administrative features in there as well um, that'll be good for, for Josh and others, but um, there's some of those key end user ones. Uh, so, so feel free to do that. Um, there's also all of our documentation, self-help guides. Um, there was a free online end user training. Um, we just merged the website together, so that's not there anymore. They're going to bring it back. Um, and basically what it does is that same thing. It takes all those videos, and there's a little mini test out beside each video. You take the test. After you go through all the videos, you can print out your own little, little certificate saying you passed. Um, and it's, it's, uh, you take as many times as you want. Take only a couple of them, really doesn't make any difference, but if you need to, it's, it, it's there and it will be there uh, again. And that's the, the link to, that's actually the old link, but it's cognify.com uh, slash video center is where it will be. And then you'll see the, the new links up there. Documentation as well, it's under the same website. And then we do have apps. So you can download uh, our, our apps uh, as well. There's a tech support app that we supply, uh, both for Apple and Android, uh, which a lot of our, our partners use. Um, and then um, this system doesn't have, but there's a mobile app as well where you can, you can view your, your video from your phone. So this kind of gives you an idea of some of the list. Um, the SLC is a software license code, so you know, how do you find that in case you're calling in tech support, but how do you configure things? How do you manually add cameras? Those are mostly configuration functions uh, administrator functions, uh, but um, it's the same group. It's, it's how to do certain things. This was the operator training. So you can see, you just click on the video, and then off to the side, you can see where there was a little mini test that you can take um, that's, uh, that was really informative. And these are key, in, key uh, emails. So sales, I don't want to decide. It's actually going to change again. Um, support, sales engineering, training. Um, Professional services is our, our internal level five team that helps tech support out. And we'll actually come on site and, and uh, do audits of the system and, and uh, help configure. Uh, and then uh, product management and marketing as well. So let's go over some of the components. There's what's known as an ocular base. The base is the centralized user management tool for the entire system. So it defines all the users, all the groups, all your privileges for the entire system is at the base. If you have maps, it would allow maps to be in there. You could do that as well. So you can view your cameras via map view instead of physically pulling up a, a list of cameras. It's a whole other feature. Yeah, it's a cool feature um, and very, very informative. Um, it just takes a little bit of work to get them set up because you can nest these maps down where you can click on the camera on the map, pull up that camera. There could be another zone that you designate. I want to go look at the um, third floor of this high school or, or this hallway, right? You can designate those, those others, other maps, and then it would pop up the cameras from those, those locations. So it's another way to be able to make use, proper use of your system. Can you we missed your maps now? before. Can we do that now? There's no maps in the system. Well, That's just something that needs to be set up. Um, but it's something we've talked to Skyline about. It's, it's so MVU does include the maps. So once we're on MVU, there is a map feature, and it's actually <clears> right on the home site, so that if you have somebody that's unfamiliar with the building, they can pull up the map and see the list of cameras. That was part of the reason we renumbered them, and that you'll see some missing numbers in the renumbering, because as we add cameras, it will logically feed into the numbering system that's been set up. You just can't pull up the cameras from that MVU, right? That's the only 
M view is just a live view and it's through the state. It's, oh, it's a state. Oh, it's one yes. through, okay, yes. all right, cool. All right, I got you, I know where you're at. All right, um, so that's, that's the capabilities. There's also capabilities to do events. Um, there's, there's functions within the system that allow you to pop up alarms, conditions, depending on um, different events. Uh, like a camera going down, we can that can be configured. So there's multiple functions within the base that is a that can be done. The administrator is the tool that allows you to access that SQL Server database information. So that's the actual software. That's what uh, Jason and others and Skyline will pull up to be able to, to see the data and administrate your system. The client is what you guys use. Um, so there's a couple different clients. There's the Oculus client, which is a thick client. There's also a web viewer. It's also a mobile app, so there's multiple ways to be able to view the video. Right now, you, you guys are only using Oculus Client, which is fine. Um, it does give you more capabilities than the web uh, or the mobile, but it's only like a handful of things at this point. And then the recorder, that's the, the lowest level of the system. It's the, it's the part of the system that's actually doing the recording of the video. It knows how many days of storage, what the camera names, um, how they're configured, uh, all that's done down in the recorder itself. And then you don't use this, but there's an event proxy that will pass events back and forth. So down in the recorder, so just like Ocular Space, the recorder has its own subset of, of systems. The core is that database of information. That's where the physical data uh, resides, so the camera name, the, the amount of data storage, all that's in the core. Um, and there's what we call a master and a slave for redundancy to help uh, manage the system. The device manager is that lowest, lowest level of the system, along with the media database service, that really does pull in the video from the camera and then stores it. So that kind of gives you an idea of, you know, those are all under the core, that have been managed by the core. They know that there's multiple physical recorders, device managers out in the system, but the core has control of all of them. It knows everything that's going on. And then just like Ocular uh, Phase has an Ocular Administrator, the core has an Ocular uh, Recorder Manager that is able to tap into that database and, and present the, the information much better. I won't really go into this too much. Um, but we are a fully open platform system. Um, it's very flexible. Uh, there's multiple ways to configure the system. Um, that's just really what that goes into. There are three models. Um, they have enterprise, right? So you have enterprise, which is our mid-tier and our most used function, most used model. Kind of gives you a quick idea of what it will do. Um, there's just different features and functions between the models, so I'm, I'm not gonna hover on this too much, but um, depending on what, you, what, what features you need, you can mix and match across those features. That's just a more of a cost savings. And then this is probably one of the best things. I always like showing this because this is one of the best things about our system. Uh, and we're the only one, only VMS that does this right now is we have what's called a, a smart driver. So depending on what camera you use, because camera manufacturers come out with new cameras all day long, every day, you know, and they put them out there. So it's real difficult for, you know, people like Skyline and the administrator to say, okay, I got a new camera, I need to put this in, but now I've got to wait to the, to the manufacturer to be able to write a new driver so I can use a new camera. We've done a special thing with about 15 camera manufacturers, all the major major ones out there. We support 400 manufacturers, but the 15 majors or so, um, we actually talk to the camera when you first put it in, and we'll say, how many streams do you have? What's the resolution of those cameras? Do you have other functions in there, like analytic functions built into the camera? If so, build the driver on the fly, and now let you use it right away. So that's one of the, the best features that, that Oculus uh, can, can provide along with our, our smart client, which is really good. And then this is the integration. So we support about 300 uh, technology partners that we integrate with, whether it be emergency phones, um, facial recognition, other analytics. Uh, I don't want to go skip by this because these are all system designs. This is my standard presentation, so all right. Um, so client overview. What does the Oculus client allow you to do? Uh, monitor live video from as many number of cameras you have. The way your system is broken up, it's broken up by the school. So depending on which school is accessing, you, you typically don't have access to your cameras within that school. Um, other people, other administrators have access to the entire system. So it's very well uh, grouped, privileged 
function. Uh, right now, the way it's set up is you have full privilege for everything you can do. So if there's ever a need where you need to limit some of that, prime example may be um, something happens where, this always happens, but uh, a YouTube video goes out of an incident that really shouldn't have gone out. Um, so how do you track that? Well, there's a feature in our system, the audit log, that's capturing all the data, every keystroke you do, anybody does, it's captured, it's logged by the user. So it, it, the administrator can go in and find out who exported this video and when they export it, because YouTube will tell you where it came from. So timestamp, you can sort by timestamp. You can actually go see who exported this video when they shouldn't have exported the video to an AVI format. Um, you don't have alerts, but you can also do alerts, exporting the video clips, key. The three main ones, major ones is AVI, which is a standard Windows media format. Um, that's, that's a generic one. It's not evidence because it can be, mod it can be modified. Um, and so it cannot go to, to an evidence captured uh, function. Uh, but for a quick one, you just need to share something. That's a real good way. Uh, the database is the standard that you guys use. That says it's a native resolution, native format, watermark protected, uh, and it comes with the viewer so that it can be only viewed from that viewer. Um, so it's not, it's, it's, it's very specialized to what the system can do um, and allows uh, um, the, the, the lawyers and everything to be able to ensure that the video has not been modified. Bookmarks is another one. Um, mentioned this earlier to, to uh, IT. Bookmarks is in the exact same format as the database. So if you see something, but you're not sure it's an incident, then you can quickly bookmark it, just like you would database export, but it doesn't, it puts it in a different location. Uh, and that way, it's just like a bookmark in a browser. It's a temporary spot, it's set up there temporarily. It's managed by the IT administrator. You gotta go down a different view to see all these, these good bookmarks. But it's a, it's a lot quicker in doing things. And then if you need to export it to true database, you pull up the bookmark and you re-export it as a database format with the viewer just like you normally do. So it's a real fast way. I just did this recently uh, with the university. Um, I was showing them some of the features and uh, had a high resolution camera that was kind of pulled back off the, of the, one of the roads, but it could see the dorm. And we just happened to catch a guy at one of the windows because the dorm windows were pretty low. Um, and we caught him right at the end. It looked like he was either handing something into the window or pulling something out. We couldn't quite tell. Right? So I quickly did a, um, we call a time slicing feature, where I searched the video, found the entire incident, and well, we found out it was the guy coming out of the window. He'd been in there all night long, and so they still sent somebody out. But, but there's a perfect example. Not knowing that it's a real evidence, that it's a real incident, they're gonna send somebody out, but they bookmarked that as a temporary thing, so, that, so if something really did happen, now they have it captured, right? Uh, but it's not sitting out there as what we call an evidence version. It's a temporary location. So there's where the, that's the real power of bookmarks. Quick, it's simple, it's fast, it's temporary, right? Um, well, it's temporary as long as you, who, who, whoever has the capability to remove it. The other thing's in the system, and this, we, we haven't had a lot of people use this, but you can actually, through the user, through the interface, you can actually push live video to another user. So if I'm logged in, and if Carla's logged in to her system, um, there's a feature where if I'm looking at video, I can push a camera view to her view. Um, people don't really use that much. Um, it's mainly used by first responders and, and operation centers, um, but the feature is there. And then maps, which we talked about, which you guys got a different way of doing that. So that's, this is the older login, but that's, that's the login. You guys see this, it's now in green. The color has changed, but you enter your username, password, uh, I think the server's predefined, um, but it's there for you. Some of the menus across the board you'll see um, is views, and actually this has changed a little bit too because we used to have, that used to be called the Ocularis Eye up on the left hand corner, it's now the, the Cognify Q. Um, but there's views, you pull down, you get a menu list, there's triggers which you guys don't have. Audio, we can record audio, so if you just want to play back an audio you can do that as well. Browse is the, is the tab that you would go to to be able to actually look at recorded video. And then there's other functions with time slice will allow you to do export, kicks in whenever you're, you're browsing. Um, so there's other functions and features on the menu. And I think I'm gonna just pull it up from here. This is usually the best time. Are there any questions right now?
So the top is that menu that I was talking about. Um, you see this is just one of the views. We've got um, really only seven cameras here. Uh, the two black ones just means they haven't populated that area with a camera. Doesn't mean you can't. I can always go down in the middle. I can right mouse click. You will see what we call the circular menu bar. And the little camera icon over on the side, click up, that pulls up the list of cameras in the system, right? So I, I now I'm only focusing on that one, what we call a viewport, that one little section, right? I only want to populate that one section with a different camera. What's the quickest way to do that? Well, there's multiple ways. Quickest way is the way they've got them um, naming convention, you can put in the filter at the top and you can say, I only want to see BOE cameras. So I quickly filter down to just my cameras, right? Now in this case, this is admin, so he's got access to all of them. You're only going to see yours, but you can set this up so that it says, uh, depending on the naming convention, you know, um, like deck view, right? I could have pulled up a deck, right? And you could put that in there and you could have seen just those cameras. So this is a quick way to filter and search to find a camera. I select the camera, now it's populated. Now it turns out it's the same deck as the other one over there. But that's just a quick now that, And that's a temporary change to the view. You're not doing anything permanent. You're just looking at something a little bit different. Same way I can do, I can click on the top. Now I'm seeing the camera at the full, full view, full resolution. You can zoom in on areas. You notice you got the picture in picture up here now. I can, if I want, I can, I can click over in the picture in picture and move that image around. If I click anywhere in the image, it goes back to the full view. If I go back to the blue bar and click on the blue bar, it goes right back to the, the actual view. And it's trying to refresh the, the camera, so it'll give you just a second to, to catch back up. So those are some quick pause means it's temporarily trying to do it. X means it's, it's not connected, so it'll come back up in a second. Let me just go back and forth. Force it to reconnect. Okay, so so that's you know control within the environment, right? If I want to pull up another camera, if I want to look at a different camera, that's fine. Pull it up, change one of the views. You don't have to go change the view. You can pull it up within the current view. It's a temporary change. It does not change it permanently. It's just while you're monitoring it. Mm. A second here, I'm having a little technical difficulty connecting to the system. Come on, network. Views, that was what I was up in, that was the top one. You pull down the views. Could be you're only gonna see your group in this area. In this case, I can see them all, but you only see your school system uh, and then only your cameras. Now the newer system does have the capability to allow you to create your own views. Um, you'll see on some of them, like if I go to the one I'm on, right? There's a private section here, right? This private section you can actually create your own view. It's not stored on your laptop or your workstation. It's stored back at the administrator. Um, but that is a way for you to temporarily create a view that you want to use. Um, and then you can pull it up anytime you want. But they'll know that you've created one. They make it to delete it. It's up to them. They have the power to delete it. Um, but that's just a, a, a quick way. And I think, I think he says that's turned off right now. So it's not even privileged in there. Uh, but that's why that private group is there. Um, what else is under view? If you look down the bottom, since this has all of them. So you see other functions, system admin, which you don't really have. Um, 
shared, which you don't. Tools is another good one. There's, tools is that section where I talk about the bookmarks. If there were any bookmarks, this is where you would go to it. In this case, there are. Isn't that great? So somebody's used bookmarks. You'll see that it shows date and time. This was back in, in October of 2019, right? There's two sections up here we call it the hot spots. You can click on the entire incident. If I click on the video, it will then pull up the video on the left hand side of the incident that was bookmarked and on the right it should pull up um, the live view if it can find it. Depends on whether the video is still there or whether that camera is still tied to it so it may not be able to. But that's, that's the temporary location. You can name it whatever you want. You can name it an incident. There's ways to create that and I'll show you when we export bookmarks but you'll see that, that information. down there. Hate admin. It's too much stuff. All right. Sorry, I just went to another view. What else is in there? So, so I guess I, I explained everything in live. Um, you're, you're always looking at live. You know it's live. If you don't see the red, right? Red says it's not. You don't see that bar in the bottom that says it's it's uh, it's in, in browse mode. You also see this says live, not browse. So there's a, so if you think about other incidents, and I'll, I'll share an example with you, um, the the school shooting uh, down in Florida that occurred. Um, the reason that they had the issues that they had, and this wasn't our system. It was a, it was a competitor system, so I'm not gonna, I'm not going to bash them. But what was going on was when uh, first responders in the sheriff's department came on site, they looked at, they were looking at the video. They did not realize the video they were looking at was video in the past. So they thought, from what they were viewing, that this, the shooter was still on site. So they were keeping first responders from even going in to the system to save our kids. Um, it delayed all that. When in reality, he was already off site, already off campus. And the whole situation could have been could have been changed. So just be aware of how, when you're looking at your system, or if you have someone else come look at, am I looking at live or archived, previous recorded? Quickest way is in our case, our system. There's no bar on that bottom, right? If I go to browse mode, <clears throat> ah, it's going slow. It'll take a second to pop into browse. Anyway, so if I go to browse mode, I'm going to tell you, there's a, there's a, we call it the kinetic timeline across the bottom, right? And it's going to be uh, color coded, so you'll know, right? Far to the right is going to be black, which means it's future video. I can't predict future video. Um, and then it should be green from then on. That's the recorded video. Uh, alarms, alerts, we also have a red condition that we can throw up there, uh, but you don't have that. So... And it keeps going. So now we're in, now we're in browse mode. You can tell for the two reasons. Like I said, down at the bottom is that kinetic timeline. You got controls uh, over here, uh, and then you're seeing red at here. Now, why does it say before start a database? That's because I clicked on a, on a time before you even had video, right? So how do I get that back quick? This button right here says move to the newest frame. That's your quickest way that you know you get to the current time you need. Right, the current time you were on, if you're not there. So now you see that green, uh, purplish, blackish information. You'll see some gaps, right? They're probably doing some maintenance in here. That's no video during that time frame. Um, so just depending on what's going on in the system, uh, if you're doing motion recording, that could affect it. Uh, but that's that's what you're going to look at. So I think the way your system is set up, it's 24/7, so it's all who's been recorded. So unless they're doing maintenance on the We've got so we just recently, just so you know, we found that um, there were a lot of different continuous and motion settings, and we found that not all schools were recording for the same amount of time. So when we did the update back in February, everybody has been set so that every camera is recording continuously from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. it goes to motion until 6 a.m. Basically, the biggest change that that has for us is that we're keeping a 
big monitor on the recording time no because we are doing so much continuous recording to make sure that we're not missing anything during school hours. We have to look at our servers a lot more frequently just to make sure that, not, that everything is getting backed up. So that really doesn't affect you, but so you know that you've got continuous recording happening on every camera from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day. Okay, that's good. So that's why the black. The black is going to be time that's going to be outside the scope, or like I said, or it was a maintenance period, right? So how do I how do I move to a, to a different time, right? If I know it's earlier in the day or a different time, a couple of different ways. One is just moving the kinetic timeline. So I'm just going to left mouse click on that green area, and I'm just going to drag left or right, right? So all I'm doing is drag, dragging left and right. You'll see the times changing across the top for those cameras that have video during those time frames, right? It's catching up. Right? The other way, there's a little time button down here. I can pull that up and now I can just scroll down and say go to 6 o'clock, 8 o'clock is morning and now you can see all those cameras at a different time, right? And so that center point on the green down at the bottom is now at 828 and all the cameras that have video are now time synced to that same time. The way the system is set up, and this is typical, is the views are grouped to an area, right? So it's, it's a hallway. In this case, it's an outside common area, right? So it's a logical grouping of the cameras. This is really key because if there's an incident, you want all the cameras in that area all showing at the same time, right? And you can view them. And do you want to export them all? Up to you. You can export all of them or just the one you're, you're interested in where you, you actually saw the, the incident occur. So those are multiple functions in there. Um, so now I'm on, what happened? All right, let the client update again. Come on. Yeah. Welcome to our system. Welcome to, yeah. to have a conversation with Kendra after this. Why is this so You guys want to talk about coronavirus far away? Yeah, really. Okay. What else you want to talk about? <clears throat> yeah, it's not even updating. Wait, I know it's not. There's a little green dot in this top corner. It should be flashing. <laughs> That's how I know it's. It's actually connected, and it's not even flashing. I think some of it is based on this computer too. Could be. Yeah, I don't know what's on this computer. I mean, all right. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in on just one and see if I can limit the bandwidth here, what's going on with this computer. Um, so I clicked on the one camera. It's in browse mode. I can see the green and see what's going on, right? You also have on the right-hand side a plus and minus button. So you can hit the plus and you can zoom in on the time sequence, right? I can expand that out as much as I want um, or zoom in or say you zoom out. That was a zoom in, plus a zoom in, minus a zoom out. So I can, I can adjust that. The, the buttons across the top here, this is oldest and newest frame, so I can go back to the furthest time frame on that uh, video or, or the newest. You can also go back, you know, at the word sequences, you don't have that. Um, so let's now, here's the quickest way that I always like to, here's the quickest way to find it. Now, we know earlier we saw a guy sitting down on the, on the deck, right? I just happened to catch it from when I was demonstrating. So what I want to see is, what's the fastest way to find when that guy had, was on that deck, right? So now that I'm on the camera, there's this feature here called Time Slice. I can hit Time Slice. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to start at the time that I had it selected, and it's going to give me, you'll see it's marked 10 minute, 10 minute increments. So these are going to be thumbnails in 10 minute increments. Right away, you see down there, there's somebody right there on that deck, right? So real quick, just from a time standpoint, I'm going to find little segments that I can go find the incident, right? So I see the guy, if I actually click on that incident, that 
now becomes the primary frame up on the top right-hand corner, or top left-hand corner, right? So now I can do two ways. If I know that's at the beginning, in this case, I think I caught it right at the beginning, so it's kind of lucky. Um, you can also zoom in on, on one minutes and 10 second increments. But now I can sit there and say, okay, this is the incident. This is when the guy's you know, doing whatever he's doing. Down at the bottom, there's these two flags down here. It's a start and stop marker. I'm gonna click on the start, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it. Sorry, apologize. Um, I want to drag it to the right until I get to the full area, full time, right? And you can see it moving up there. You see the time up in the top corner? Right up here in this top corner, as I'm moving, the time is adjusting. So there he is going into the building. So that's about the last point. Now I'm going to mark stop. If you go look in the middle here, and I'm going to zoom in, right? You see this little area right here, this kind of, it's, it's hard to see, it's green, it's actually yellow. Um, but you'll see a start and start marker, right? So that's what we call the region of interest, right? That's the area that I want to see that I want to export, right? So I've marked the beginning and the end. Now I'm going to say export. Now you've got the five. <clears throat> what are the five? Print. Print is a quick little way, and I'll actually, let's see if I can do it. I'm going to say, give it a header, I can name it whatever I want, put comments in there, and you can print out this one little file that says, this is, it'll show you the camera name, the time of the incident, um, uh, and whatever comments you put on there. You can go email that to anybody and just say, hey, this is what I go saw, go, go check it, because you caught it right away. So it's a real quick way of just saying something, I think something happened here, go check it out. Um, and if I preview it, yeah. So preview, there you see what it is. So you'll see the snapshot of the time. There's, there's all that information that I would have put in there, and I can send that out. The other one is individual frames. Most people don't use this. This is exactly what you would think. If I got a digital camera and I'm taking a bunch of cameras, I pull that SD card, I drop it in my laptop, and you'll see all the, the pictures. That's the same thing as what individual frames were. So every frame of data that was captured is going to give you a little small little thumbnail that you're going to export out. The only way that the only thing that's really good for is for really for evidence. If I want to build a incident report and say, okay, I took this frame, I'm going to drop it in a Word doc. Here's the guy when he came into the incident, and then I'm going to write some information and I'm going to build another one and say, here's where he actually did the incident. Write some more information, and then here's where he left the, the scene of accident. Right? That's what those frames are really good for. Um, so for evidence purposes, that's where it really plays well. Database, that's the format that you guys use. Uh, that is that watermark protected, evidence protected. And if I click on it, one of the things you'll notice is up at the top it says select all cams. This was that thing I was telling you about, the logical grouping of the cameras, right? I've only, it's only got checked the one that I was looking at. But I can check every camera in that view and it would export every one of them. So we know for a fact that there are other cameras that saw that deck about the same time period, right? So now you can have different views of the deck of when that guy was coming into the area. Uh, you always want to select the Ocularis viewer if that's in your documentation. Um, I wish it would go default, but our, our development team doesn't think it needs to be default. Um, you would give it a folder. So you select the folder. You can browse to wherever you want to be. And I think you guys are setting up, talking about setting up a, a Google share for this yeah right so you can do that and then you can give it a file name uh, and then it would export there's other features in there protect the video you can you can add a password you can do 128 bit encryption 256 bit encryption just levels of, of protection of the, the the data itself I'm gonna do it temporarily I'm gonna set up a temporary folder on the desktop Just to jump in real quick, Josh has put together an outline of exactly how to do this. It's available under the applications folder. Um, not well, but the applications folder where all the forms and everything are. There's a technical camera folder that's there. I'm going to share this with you as well. So it's right <coughs> if you have an incident, you can just go to this and see exactly how to download it. But it's this. It's the in, same In applications, format. not in the Google Share Drive. In applications. So where he's asking you to save this, there's a couple different 
options. One is to just do it on flash drive or desktop. The other one is to put it into your own Google Drive so that you can share it. So if you're physically going to share it with somebody, you can put it on the flash drive if it's going to law enforcement. If you set up your own folder on Google Drive, you can choose who you share it with then so that it's not available to everybody. The one thing that we didn't want to do is create one central repository because not everyone will have access to events that are happening in every building. The thing that you said you set up though, it's an application, it's not a Google yes, Drive. Yes, correct. But I will share this with you as well so that you have it, but it's in his folder um, that he's created too. I'll show you how to pull that up in a minute. But the other thing I want to show you is I still got that marked. So I can do a bookmark. Bookmark, like I said, is a temporary storage repository. So it's going to export the exact same format, the exact same information that it did, except, it's, except it, it doesn't have to stay permanent. You can also add classifications. These are defined by the administrator. So you can define, like, uh, suspect, uh, uh, you know, rowdy employee, rowdy kid, you know, whatever. You can, you can put those type of classifications in there. Um, and then you can tag information, and then once again, you can submit it. I'm going to submit that for now just so we have it. And then the other one, like I said, is AVI. So AVI is a different type of format. Um, it does take longer, so be, make note of that. If I do try to store as an AVI, it is the longest export. Because of the fact that it has to take all the data, it has to reconvert it, rebuild it, and then put it out in an ABI format. It does work, but it just takes longer. So if you've got a lot of data that you're trying to do, it's going to take you a long time. Database export's always the fastest. So now that I got it, if I want to go view that, what I did was I created a temporary folder uh, on the desktop. Where to go? Right there. Temp. Well, I said I did. Maybe I put it on a different folder. Why did that store? Maybe I didn't give it a file name. I did. Export. Unless it's going to allow me to write to this. It's not writing to the. Right to the disk desktop. Can't view it. Yeah, it could be another. Yeah. All right, so I can't show you that. So I would say once you have Josh's instructions, try it. Practice if you have not done it, or if this is new to somebody in the organization, have them at least practice it so you know where it's going once it's saved. That's a question. So dropping oh, there it is. the database doesn't export and convert it to an ABI file. So what that's telling me in my brain is it's basically cataloging, hey, I want you to go back into the server and look at this 30-second window, and it runs that way. Is that correct? Instead of converting it out to an ABI. Yeah, so your, your question is exporting a database, does it... It doesn't convert to an ABI, you got to do it separately. Right. The right. Yeah. So once I export it to database instead of creating an ABI, once we get to a memory overwrite, is my database link lost then? So when you create a so, so does it does does a database over does a database export overwrite any video or does it ever get removed? Your database export writes it to another location. Does it does not touch the repository of the video. Right. Just like bookmarks does not touch the repository. Right. It actually copies it out to another location. Just like exporting AVI copies it to another location. So the data remains in the, the repository in the, the normal viewing uh, playback of the, of the video until the retention period deletes it. And once that happens... Then it's gone, but you still have the export. If I created an ABI. Yeah, or if you created a database export. 
because everything is copied out. It's co the video is copied out, all the information is copied out to another location and a separate location. So it's there until you physically go delete that file. And just for intellectual purposes, what is it that it's copied out as that takes less time than creating an API file? Okay, so the, the data is in what we call H.264 or H.265 format. Yep. It's an encoded type of set, uh, capability within um, the camera's capability, right? So to create an ABI, that's not that native standard codec, right? So what we have to do is we have to take every frame and rebuild it. I go through the explanation. H.264 says, if I got a, if I got a, a, a video, um, it takes frame one, takes a snapshot of that entire frame. And then for the next 29 frames, if you do 30, 30 frames a second, right? In the next 29 frames, it looks at each frame and says, have any pixels changed in that image? If so, that's the only part I'm saving. So it's like motion detection in a way, in reality it really is, right? And that's what it writes. So it's a bunch of little bitty 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 images throughout the whole thing until it gets to 31 and now it takes another snapshot. So what we have to do from an ABI standpoint is we have to take frame one, take frame two, add it, frame three, add it, frame four, add it. That's the rebuild of the ABI. Okay. And the other issue is the ABI would be viewable outside of the system, whereas the database download is only viewable inside the software. Correct, using the viewer or, or using the client, correct. That's correct, because it is in our native format. That is correct. That is correct, great question. Right. I was able to find it. It actually dropped it in another folder. But it's not pulling it up. The viewer's not working real well. Can I bring up one more thing? Yes, you may. Go ahead. Sorry, Sid. I just figure uh, while we're all here and these guys are here, I might get snapped at if I didn't ask you while we were all in the room. What What is it specifically that's causing our system to be so laggy all the time? Like I've been, I've been trying to watch a Browns video, just playing for five minutes, it's just stuck. Is that a, like a memory issue on our side? Is that a network broadband issue is, is that because i'm trying to run it off a wi-fi connection okay. yes to all the above yeah i mean it could be could be anything so the question was why is browsing video from where he's at taking so long um there are a number of different uh, reasons why um one it, it's all about how much data is being passed we call it bandwidth 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 right so how does that data get to your current laptop, right? It's somewhere else, it's trying to view it, Why? where is it trying to pull it from, right? If it's, if it's out in the middle of nowhere and the connection hops take a while, that, that's the lag, right? Because you're trying to go connect to that physical recorder where that video is stored and pull that video back um, from a just browsing live or, or a recorded video. And I would if it's an export, that's different because now it's usually pretty local, so that should run pretty fast. And I would expect that. I think what some of us have found at our schools in a hardline network computer desktop sitting right there plugged into the wall jack, no Wi-Fi issues at all. Um, what I'll be watching is very frustrating trying to watch a 20-second segment. It'll play for three, freeze up, and then pick up at like 17 seconds, and I'm trying to watch the stuff in the middle of it. Yeah. And I'm just trying to, you know, is there, for instance, trying to propose a solution might it be good for my school to say, hey, we're going to get one computer that's right here, hardlined in, and dedicated just to this. It's not trying to run anything else. It's not trying to do anything else. This is just the video viewing computer. Yeah, and it has, uh, you know, a good amount of RAM, has a good amount of, you know, processing power. Absolutely. I mean, that, that, that eliminates everything else. You're exactly right. So his question was, does he set up a, a computer that is uh, strictly for viewing agent only? Um, the client itself, if you use an Arctic client, it is pulling resources from the computer. So if there's other applications that's running, absolutely that could affect pulling video, viewing video, because it's got to turn around the, the way it's doing. So just like the ABI file does, the explanation I was giving, um, the client does the exact same thing. To view it smoothly, it's got to rebuild that file. 
right? And that's done on the client, right? The client just retrieves all these little segments and then rebuilds them and plays them back. So depending on the graphics card, the amount of RAM, the amount of CPU, other applications running on that physical laptop or workstation, that absolutely can affect how fast it's viewing. So without a doubt, we've done benchmarks left and right, you know, depending on what's under the system, you know, uh, there's ways to, to maximize your viewing capability. Last question and then I'll shut up. No. The, maybe. The, maybe you will. The servers that run this, are they, are they up here and we're trying to stream them down or I have mine in my building? Yeah, so you're in a distributed architecture. So the question, just so you guys know, was where are the physical servers located? And that's a good question. Um, so the, this actually do the recording. They are in your, in your individual schools. We call that a distributed architecture versus a central architecture. Um, and for your system, the way that works is when you log in with your user credentials, you're authenticating to the base. The base is here, right? So it, it, you're actually logging into the system here, and it's saying you are whatever your name is, these are the a cameras you got access to. What it then does is it builds a file that's stored back on your laptop that says, here's access to all my cameras from all the recorders in my school, right? And so now when you're viewing video, you're only talking local. You're only local within your school, which is a real key thing, because now you're not going back and forth and worry about the other yeah, bandwidth. Because that's what I'm thinking is, now if I can get a decent computer, Correct. I've got a direct hard line right back to the server that's yeah. got the data on it. Yep, yep. Yeah, once you do the connection, once it gets that authentication, then you're directly connecting to your recorders in your school. Yeah. And we can provide recommendations to Skyline say, here's, here's what we recommend um, for a beefy workstation client recorder. I mean, we do this all day long. Um, now, the other, the other option, and um, I don't think they have it here. We have some of the other locations. We have a web mobile client. It's free. Um, you just got to install it. That can also speed it up because the web version of the client is, is a different resource structure, right? Um, it uses um, what's now known as uh, HTML5 or WebRTC. So the structure of rebuilding the files is much more efficient than the, than the Flash player, the old you know, Flash player. So we've changed some of the technology that we're doing on the website versus the, uh, the FIC client. Um, so that might be another option as well to use the web login once the you got to set up the software because it's I don't think it's installed but that would allow you to do web viewing which might speed up your, your the only limitation like I said with the web is that you can't see the maps which you don't have so you don't, it doesn't matter and then it must be H.264 or H.265 streams you can't view motion JPEG streams that's not in the web they don't allow that so I did find the file just so you know I clicked on the, the auto.bat, uh, auto and now I can play this, I can run this. So let's see if it decodes it from the client. I don't see it storing it. Same type of thing, same, same decoding of the, the video. It's just taking too long to do. But this is the structure you would see. There's a data folder, which is where all the data is. This is the actual viewer. We create your batch files that you can, you can double click on and run the video. There's actually two .oml files. That's because I, I exported it twice over top of each other. Um, but it is the same, same export data. Um, so it's just not going to run here. I think that hearing that you're having a lot of lag issues and it sounds like it's in every building or it's something that's prevalent, we'll take a look at what these dedicated machines will work with Skyline to see what help a dedicated machine would do and also what this web client allows you to do and if that relieves any of that and we'll, we'll let you know what we find. And I think one of the things is the, the hard drives that we're still using in the schools are older and the video cards in them are ancient. And so they're having a tough time keeping up with this type of data. So it, either we upgrade the video card or we have to just get a hard drive in each school that can actually run at that speed. Yeah, the, the, the hard drives don't have near as much influence on it. The, the video card does, the processor speed, the amount of RAM sorry, does. I'm sorry, the hard drive is the CPU. Yeah, yeah, the CPU definitely affects it. 
Um, the operating system, if it's, you know, you're still running Windows 7, Windows 10 is the latest, right? Uh, that can actually affect uh, the, the, uh, the processing. Um, and then um, the RAM, the amount of RAM, um, well, uh, and the video card. And the video card has RAM on it as well, so multiple functions that could slow down the re replay. And Carl, I'd like to volunteer uh, Steven from Middle School to be a test school for you. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. So when you get a new workstation here, we gladly test it out for you. Now he's not new. Yep, I'm done. Does that mean he's giving you the, the, the budget too to do that? He's going to provide you, right? <laughs> That's always the issue. Where, where does the money come from, right? Yeah. Um, that was that basically it. I don't think any more questions, um, comments, concerns. All right, we're done early, are we? Well, no, two o'clock. Yep, right on time. Good deal. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. We apologize. We just, our system is slow sometimes, and mine just takes a long time to come up. So yours, it may have still come up if we'd have had more time. But we thank you for coming to share that with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you.